Welcome to Tales from the Green Room, backstage conversations from popular music venues around the country, curated by Mount Tam Media. Listen in as host Dennis Trezullo and Mount Tam Media founder Tammy Larson dig up conversations with artists before and after shows in the exclusive confines of the Green Room. Well, hello, and welcome to another episode of Tales from the Green Room. I'm Dennis Trezula, your host, along with Tammy Larson, founder of Mount Tam Media, who presents to you Tales from the Green Room, among other amazing podcasts. Oh, I am so happy that you dropped a sidekick thing. Well, we'll I didn't drop it. I just didn't do it this time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm going to become the sidekick soon enough. So today we're introducing a combined podcast, two separate interviews done separately, both again, though, backstage at the Sweetwater Music Hall in Mill Valley with Luther Dickinson, the Mississippi, North Mississippi All-Stars, and with Jason Crosby, who is with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He's like he, one of those. He's like, he's like Dan Leibowitz, always somewhere. Yeah, like or, you know, Weir is everywhere. Right. They say that, too. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, it was pretty natural to piece them together because uh, Luther and Jason have played with Phil and Friends together I don't even know how many times. I was trying to go back and count and do the research on it. It was too numerous to mention since 2013. Wow. So these guys were appropriately joined in our podcast, and they've been joined uh, on their own (laughs) for many years before that. Uh, Luther is first. The thing that blew me away when uh, I sat him down, and by the way, you were late for this one. Tammy. Well, you know, you it's the first time I've ever heard you that quiet while interviewing. I, I put my ear up to the door. I didn't hear a thing. I didn't think you were in there. Well, we were back there, you know, chatting. Luther got very comfortable, was laying down on the couch, <laughs> and he was telling story. But I was just shocked to learn this was his very first appearance at Sweetwater Musical. I know, because he'd been talking so much about, you know, Terrapin and that crew and how much he loved it there. And so I was excited to hear how he felt about, of course, the sound system at the Sweetwater. Right. And I, so this isn't on the podcast, but I went directly up to him after, and I was just like, so what do you think? And he was like, oh my God, wow. Yeah. (laughs) And he loved Terrapin, as we all did. Mm -hmm. So it was, and it just occurred to me, I guess I saw him so many times there and never at Sweetwater, but I thought he would have been there once, but his brother Cody was there, but not him. But we got into discussions about his father, James, who was a you know, a session musician, producer who played at Muscle Shoals with the Rolling Stones on Wild Horses. I mean, How about yeah, that? some of his stories. <laughs> I really listened to this other night. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe his story. Yeah, oh my God. The whole bit about uh, the Americana music evolvement with his dad and how he learned the dad. Uh, he shared that sentiment with Andrews Osborne, who is someone we have also interviewed, and you'll hear down the road. They had that same idea of trying to figure out the dead music, but then not naturally coming to mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. So uh, they obviously bonded. Uh, It was a very interesting theme. And then meanwhile, as far as Jason, Jason had recently come back from a trip to Iceland recording with O'Teal. So cool. I mean, and he was just beaming about that. He will, as, well, Luther will not be at Skull and Roses, but Jason, because he is everywhere, will be, and he'll be appearing with Phil and Friends. And he will be appearing also with Moon Alice. So we'll see him a couple of times. He talked also about his new album, Gilder, which I called Glider, which, you know, like a dumbass. Well, I mean, when you're as old as we are, it's kind of easy to mix up. But it it says piano covers of artists that he has played with. So that's a lot of people. And he was saying how cool it was that all those folks that... uh, he played his their music. We're texting him, etc. He was very proud of that. Just a great guy and a, a Marin County regular. Mm-hmm. Now we stole him from the East Coast. We did. So we'll see him at Skull and Roses. We hope to see you there and listen to this uh, fun combo interview on Tales from the Green Room. So uh, Luther Dickinson, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, Dennis Trezillo, Mount Tam Media, Tales from the Green Room. And we are just so pleased to have you in the Green Room here at uh, Sweetwater Music Hall. And you just told me that you never played here. It's my first time ever in either Sweetwater. In either Sweetwater. So you even individually did not have not played at either venue. No, I've never been here. My, Cody has, because he makes the Take Me to the River movies. And the producer, Martin Shore, lives around here. He used to live in Ross, but he's moved since then. But uh, yeah, Cody's been here. Bob gave him a tour. But 
Yeah, I'm more of a Terrapin kid. Yeah, you are. I, was, <laughs> I saw all those fill-in friends with you up there, which I miss. <laughs> Me too. Terribly. Oh, I can man. say that from Sweetwater. It's yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, many of us do. We've tried to, we, whoever that is, the community. That's right. The collective is, we. The collective we have tried to move the vibe here as much Great. as possible. You know, well, I'm happy you know, to support. I mean, it's, it's close. And so having you here is a big first, or not for a big step contributing to that. So thank you. <laughs> you yeah. know what I was thinking about today that blew my mind about that scene was, like when Phil had that tiny little teardrop RV yes. and, he, and it was right by the queue, like all the whole line of people. And he'd be in there taking a nap with all the fans just lined up right in the parking lot. It was the sweetest thing, man. I, I just, just <laughs> I was, I'm thinking about that and laughing. And Diane, who you just met, she was a, uh, a stall heart there as, and there's Liz, Liz yes. Bacure, shout out down here being quiet. Oh, is it the crew? Fantastic. What a community. And, you know, the only time I cried during the pandemic during quarantine was Phil called me and asked me to contribute a song to one of his streams that he collected to support his employees before he had to shut everything down. He was trying to support like 150 people. Yeah, tough. And so I filmed the thing. I think we did Ripple, my kids and I. Oh, God. And well, that in. <laughs> well, that was cool, but it was, they did a wonderful song, Terrapin Family. And, um, it was funny. We were in the kitchen watching, listening, and I heard that keyboard. And I was like, Crosby. And sure enough. Sure enough. Jason. But when Anders Osborne came on just by himself in his kitchen, that tore me up, man. Because so many nights I've sat shoulder to shoulder with Anders in a live musical situation and listening to him swapping songs and listening to him play solo. And just to be home at that time... And not have that in my life. That was the only time it really hit me in that way. That's interesting. Yeah, and so you but all because of Phil. All because of Phil. And uh, Jason and Anders have sat in the chair that you're at uh, most <laughs> it recently. And, and, and yeah, it does. Yeah, and, and it's not the rain mildew. <laughs> That's those guys, and they've had a lot to say. It was great. And actually, I was also su surprised that Anders. It was his first time here. Uh, or maybe it was his second. I was shocked. You know, it was first or second. I want to say it was his first. I'm like, I thought you guys had all been here before. The funny thing about Anders and I's first time, you know, is I, I thought he was a, a dead, I thought he knew the whole repertoire because he covered a couple of songs. So right. I assumed that he knew all the, the whole thing. So anyway, our first Terrapin gigs with Phil were together. And uh, we fly in and we drive to the hotel, the Best Western right there. Yep. And, uh, and I run over and knock on his door and I've got my songbook and my pencil. Hey, man, can you show me these songs? And Anders is like, I don't know these songs. I'm like... Gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he wasn't alone. You get your words. So we came down the road together. You know, I mean, Jackie Green didn't know the songs. I mean, right. you know. Uh, what a else? teacher. What's that? Phil. Yeah. He brings in the more off the beaten path musician they could find. Yeah. Come on in and let's do this together and make it new. Yeah. What a teacher. It's working. You got Lebo coming in and doing it. Dude. Dan Lebo. It just goes on Stanley, and on. So, uh, Stanley Jordan? Stanley Jordan. What? Off the hook. Stanley Schofield. Jordan. Schofield. Yeah. yeah, it goes on and on. Yeah. Well, you know, he's got to get that, uh, what's her name? Uh, L.P. Giobbi. The, uh, have you ever heard of her? Yeah. The one that's spinning the discs? Yes. Somebody's got to grab her. Well, actually, I heard, I did hear, pretty good source that uh, Dead & Company invited her on their tour or to at least appear in a couple of, isn't that sick yeah uh, I yeah. love it you know it just makes me so happy I learned so much because I grew up long story short all my brothers Jimi Hendrix right. roots music southern musician and I had a lot of deadhead friends and I enjoyed all the fruits of the parking lot growing up yep. but I resisted <laughs> the music myself and then uh, thank God working for the Black Crows hanging out with Chris CR was all dead all day yeah. all night so it all seeped in all for all those years but then Phil man he taught me and Graham too you know he's Graham had just really started playing with Phil the same time I came in right. and and at being a second generation musician, he just that relationship warmed my heart to no end, and and I'm a huge champion of Graham. And now he's like the Look MD. Look at him go! Oh my God! Look at him go! Killing it! Yeah, game. he's killing it. So uh, that's you know. So it's interesting. We just caught up 
today, almost last minute, you agreed to do this so quickly, which I love. And I figured some of it was because of the Sweetwater thing. You no, know, I'm uh, happy to. Sh- you're just doing it. Chat. But you know, look behind you, right there, and on the wall for our listeners uh-huh. is uh, the original Sweetwater. That's taken from the stage. Wow. It, was, it was that narrow. It held a hundred people. Wow. And you know the iconic musicians that you've probably felt and read about. Beautiful. Played in that little stage, Elvis Costello and God, so many, Jerry Garcia, of course. Yeah, so many. So we bring that here. And uh, tonight you're going to be part of the legacy, finally. Happily, happy. So so, so happy about it. So one thing you have, among all the other things you've mentioned that are sort of crossovers and commonalities, I understand you had a big birthday recently. 50. 50. Guess what? (laughs) Sweetwater's 50. Okay, Whoa, so there you go. So right uh, you guys share that. And I was thinking about your dad, right? Because the reason I was is because he did a bunch of stuff with Ry Cooter. Is yes, that right? Yes. And I feel like it was right around that time, early 70s, mm-hmm. when you're born, right? When you're born in 72, 73, yep. January 73. Yep. And here he is doing all this stuff with Ry Cooter. And here you are 50 years later. And Ry Cooter's still one of our greatest inspirations yeah. and heroes. Man. He was a regular here, you know, really? in that room right there. Wow. Yeah. Man. And so I'm trying to make you feel the vibe if you don't oh, know. I'm, right. Dude, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> you feel it. I am in. You know, so that's, uh, that's kind of cool. There's a lot of connections. I, I get that. How about Michael Wilson? Oh, yeah. Dude, huh? we've spent time in the trenches together, you know? Yeah. And here's My your bohemian he, brother. He's your guy tonight. The funny thing about coming into the, the dead late in the game is so, like, Jerry... Hunter, Dylan, and my dad, they're all the same generation. Right. They were pre-rock and roll kids, pre-TV kids, pre-hippies. They were beatniks, right. bohemians the heads. That's right. You know? So all those early pre-rock and roll, early rock and roll influences that Jerry had, you know, be it Mississippi John Hurt, Doc Watson, Chuck Berry, you know, Charlie Christian, Django Reinhardt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I had all those from my dad. I was studying my dad's repertoire. I learned all that late 40s, early 50s, pre and early rock and roll stuff that, that Jerry was learning from his own angle. So as soon as I, and then also, you know, jazz and improv and whatever. So it was fun coming to that because I felt so right at home once I started studying Garcia's his where he was coming from on guitar yeah well and, and hunter tell me <laughs> i mean hunter i and mean the lyrics huh? the lyrics i mean it's on a par with dylan it's like true americana and that's why i love everybody be it dead and company or feeling friends like those songs are gonna live on forever I mean, if you talk, as I mentioned, the DJ, L- LP, DJ, yeah. I mean, she's 27. Right. And she's bringing the dead music to a whole generation of people that never heard of Jerry Garcia. Love that. Right. <laughs> Love and, it. And you, I mean, you're sort of rooted, not only in Brutes, but in, the, like you mentioned, the second generation, the family passing down, right? I mean, that not that really a big part of what you're doing now? Oh, my God. I mean, yeah. So much so, right? I mean, not, not only that your brother, but just, for example, tell us about, um, you got, well, you have Jesse Williams on bass, right? Is he oh, t- our man Ray Holloman is on bass. Oh, Ray Holloman. Okay. Yeah, he's from the state. He, he's another musical family family from the sacred steel tradition okay from he's in from philadelphia but it's the robert randolph roosevelt collier church of sacred steel musicians oh man yeah so cool. ray, so, playing with ray is such a wonderful wonderful and, and are we gift. gonna see uh 
Lamar Williams? No, no, oh, no, man. no. We've already, you know, we we always shift it up yeah, every couple of yeah. years, so we're all we're already on working on towards the, the next episode. The next up, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's okay because I just because I looked at the uh, love those guys. I looked at the you know, the Sweetwater's promo, uh-huh. and I said, "Wow, those guys are going to be here," but you already moved on. <laughs> that's all right. Hey, Lamar's listen. been singing with Trouble No More. Yeah, with Taz. You know, speaking oh, yeah, of the Taz. new generation. Yeah, Taz has been here, too. Oh, he's <laughs> oh, fantastic. God. That's crazy stuff, right? Well, what what about the relationship between, I feel like there is one, and I actually talked to George Porter about this, speaking of New Orleans guys and Southern guys, the relationship or similarities between the New Orleans scene or the Southern scene. Yes. And, no, it's and, New Orleans. And New Orleans, yeah. right? and And here. It's funny you picked up on that. Yeah, and it is New Orleans. Yeah. Because they have that improv flow right well i i think i say new orleans like you're north mississippi I and mean, yeah. what is that uh, how many hours <laughs> oh yeah it's just i mean i could i used to take the train down Hell. you know in the city of new orleans train the sleeper car and but no but it's I, just orleans. five hours okay you know straight south straight from south, home yeah. memphis to north mississippi straight down to new orleans but but yeah, the New Orleans free spirited improv, be it Maple, you know, the Maple Leaf, or what I learned at the Maple Leaf playing with George Porter and Johnny Vodakovich opened to me wide open to play improv with the Black Crows and also with Phil. Because, like, back in the day when they were t- schooling me at the Maple Leaf with Porter and Vodakovich, there was no set list and they didn't even want to play songs. <laughs> like it was just two sets of straight improv, you know, and that I'd never done that before. It made me nervous, but they taught me how to roll. And yeah, and now you're kind of the opposite, right? In a sense, I mean, oh, I'm pretty free spirited. Yeah, yeah. I, I read something where you said uh, you guys are uh, what was a stream of consciousness to a fault. Sometimes, yeah, <laughs> totally. At one point, we came off stage to Terrapin, and Phil looked at me and was like, "You have the proper type of mind." I was like, yes! "Yeah, yeah, that, that's the highest compliment, dude." Right? So but he, he, there's a Jerry, there's a Garcia quote where they ask him like, "Well, what other musicians can can really uh, hang with you guys and do?" Like get in the right mindset, and he's like, eh, the New Orleans guys. No, That's all he said. That was it. He nobody else but the New Orleans. Musicians. Thank you for validating that because that's kind of something that's been in my mind. You're right. And I, and I yeah. ask everybody, and George says, Yeah, he's got a whole thing on, but that has nailed it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Garcia. I, okay. Thank you for the validation, Jerry. <laughs> right? Yeah, because I'm thinking of some things I've seen on YouTube, like with you and uh, Anders doing Black Muddy River. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. That's a beauty, right? Yeah. And you mentioned, well, let, let me bounce around a bit. I, I because. Um, I have friends that always want me to ask people certain questions. And I had one buddy, shout out Kurt Scheidt. I'll give him his name. He asked me, talk about your, your solo on Oh Sweet Nothing with, uh, do you remember this? Oh. It was on the, with the Black Crow studio live take version. And you did a solo there. And I say, you think he's going to remember that? He said, yeah, hell yeah, he's going to remember that. But you don't. I remember the tune. And I remember <laughs> we used to play a little... Hey Jude, okay. you know we used to play a little Hey Jude in there a little bit, but I don't remember that particular. Don't remember that one. Oh, okay. right. Sorry, Kurt. <laughs> it was that era. Was a little hazy. Yeah. Okay. That sure that, was fun. Uh, that's legit. Well, yeah, it was you know doing the old Lou Reed and Velvet Underground, underground yes. stuff, just mixing that stuff in as well. All right, the Allman Brothers, mm, the yeah. Allman Brothers. So you did the um, the uh, what was it, the revival band. The Almond Family Revival That's what it was. with okay. Dwayne and uh, and Devin. Devin, because it, it's a it's a, started as his father's birthday party at the Fillmore, and we did that a few years, and then we started branching out, and now it's become a tour. You know, so is that with Dwayne Betts or is that that kid? He's the he's son. there. Yeah, yeah. But it's a uh, Devin Almonds. He's the figurehead of it. He's the figurehead. Yeah, but he and Dwayne, man, to stand on, you know. My father was friends with Dwayne. He recorded with Dwayne for Atlantic Records while they were in Miami. They were all in Miami together making records. So I grew up uh, hearing family folk stories about Dwayne Allman my whole life, even before I knew the music. So anyway, you know, to stand with those guys is such an honor. It had to be, huh? Well, just to give you a, a little update. So at the, uh, you're familiar with the Skull and Roses Festival? Yeah. That's one coming up, and we're going to give that a shout out. We'll be there. Mount Tam Media will be there, yeah. so we'll give it a shout out. But uh, Phil and friends, so oh, back to man. Phil, and his friends are including Dwayne Betts. Oh, that's so good. So how's that going to be? Yeah, bring her on in. 
Oh, here she is, Tammy. Hey, come on Tammy. In. Hi. Tammy, hey, come welcome. on in. Yeah, I'm gonna put on. I didn't even know anybody was in here. Was oh, is that right? I'm sorry, I had my earphones. Hi. Earphones on. Luther Dickinson. Hi. Meet nice. Tammy so Larson. Nice to meet you. She is the founder of Mount Tam Media. Here, take. And, sorry uh, for the interruption, guys. Yeah, so, so Tammy, Tammy is the uh, the brainchild behind uh, Tales from the Green Room. He says that now. I do. It's it's true. But Luther, let me tell you something. For all that what he's done with Phil and the Dead communities, etc. What is amazing is he's never played here before. <laughs> what? Okay, no way. I've been a Terrapin kid all this okay, time. Okay, so yeah. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Oh, look at you. Oh, that's usually what I'm doing back here. <laughs> Only the It used to be here so I could watch the show. But the drip. Yeah, we have a yes, little drip. drip. Uh, uh, you know what? The whole thing will be flooded before the night's over. You'll be going all the way around the building, right? Well, for, for our uh, listeners, uh, Luther's taking a nice little relaxed uh, position on our couch, and we love it <laughs> because now we know we're hanging out. Right? Green room, yeah, this is truly the green room. Post dinner. Uh, yeah, so, post dinner. <laughs> so I'm really, I'm so excited to hear what you think about this sound system first because most people play here and they're like, whoa. Oh, man. Wow. The room just yeah. by itself is lovely. And Michael's an old friend. We've worked together. Oh really? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they toured yeah. together. Yeah, and he's such a lovely soul, and he's oh know, god. He said something about my sound back in the day that just stuck with me, and I always tried to be aware of. You know, like a certain quality that wasn't good that he pointed out, and it took me years to figure out what it was. Wow. Yeah. He, do you know that he gets a shout out almost every? Um, oh every yeah, we do. He's a yeah. legend. Yeah. We could do a montage of just Michael's <laughs> shout outs, <laughs> which we yeah. probably will end up doing for sure. What do you think about? Tell me. So you play the Black Crows, big stadiums, right? Thousand, twelve, fifteen well, thousand. We're doing some theaters and stuff, you know. Okay, and then a three hundred person room like Sweetwater tonight. Oh man, come on, that's ideal. Bring this, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 it's yeah. all good. They'll take that any day. Or I'm but sure the energy. You know, last time I played with Phil was at Levitate Festival on the East Coast. Yeah. And that was a big crowd, and the energy was amazing. And it, I like it all. You yeah. know, the Colonel Bruce Hampton told me this, and it really helped me early on. Colonel was another great teacher. You know, like Phil, a real Zen master teacher. Like everything he says is a lesson that you might not realize for years to come. Warren Haynes the same way. But Colonel was like, be it 10 people or 10,000 people, don't let that affect what you do because that's just your ego messing with you. Interesting. You know, if you're right. frustrated that it's 10 people or you're intimidated that it's 10,000 people, that's just your ego. You, like, you have to train yourself to go into the music every time, no matter where you are or when it is or who's around you. And that is interesting. Yeah, that is so interesting. Well, they were taught, was it O'Teal? Were we listening to his po podcast when they, he was talking about the Colonel? Yeah. 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 Colonel, man. Feel, yeah. Have you played with Bob at all? Um, only once with yeah. the Black Crows. With the Black. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I sit in. He came, sat in with us. It was awesome. Was that here? No, ha, I'm no, kidding. No, it, no, it wasn't. It was a <laughs> random place, but it was really. I was so glad I stood right next to him. The question is, you know, where is Bob? Bobby not sitting in these days, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, hero. He's awesome. Yeah. He's he a hero. Keeps going. He yeah. loves touring. I think. Well, so the whole dead and company thing coming to a close at least they're not faking it out this time and saying that's it well, <laughs> Bob, yeah. uh, anyways, Bob, Bob, Bobby said uh, we're going to play till we drop in some other formation no so. they're just getting Billy Strings ready yeah, <laughs> that's awesome, man. Yeah, any any Billy Strings moments? I haven't met Billy yet. No, no, I, I love his work. I'm so happy for him and proud for him. Happy, you know. But I, I've never met the gentleman. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, he needs to meet you too. So that goes both yeah. ways. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what do you've got going now? What's uh, I mean, the album came out what last year? Set yep. sail. Yeah. Tell us about that. And I know you got some other things going. That was a record we made with uh, with Jesse Williams on bass and Lamar oh, Williams what? Jr. We just spoke um, from about. the Almond Brothers family yep. did the vocals and and it was really fun. I wanted to make a psychedelic folk record i felt like at that point in time i could own that you know yeah. so that record all started with my songbook and my acoustic guitar and then we just built it up from there and it was it's really fun and we had a little grammy nomination that was cool that was crazy but uh i'm finishing up an acoustic folk record that yeah. i made with my kids for my for for families it's called magic music for family folk 
Oh, I it love that. It was just that. a lovely... I love that. That would go down really well here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because they have all those Sunday, yes. you know, the kid it, thing. How old are your kids? I've already asked this question. I'm no, sorry. No. 13 and 8, two okay. girls. Oh, wow. And uh, so I'm finishing that, and I'm finishing up with my uh, film score. That's what I was going to ask you about, the film. Yeah. What's, that's, what's that all about? Man, it's my second film score, but I've learned so much, and it's just uh, really opened everything up for me. And just to be able to write instrumental music, you know, with no like song structure, just because, yeah. you know, I just write inspired by and then put it to picture and see what sticks. Right. But just to, you know, just because I don't know, I've been, always been song oriented when I put like, records like together. Lyrics. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. lyrics yeah, yeah. and and uh, stories. And but to just to, to record, you know, three years worth of instrumental music as freaky as possible has been so liberating. That is awesome. <laughs> and music is so ever fascinating and humbling. Like I never studied composers or the vernacular or the skill of film score and to learn so much more and so many great films that I had, had not seen, you know, in all these years and learning about composers really blown my mind. So did you take some like workshops or what? You said, no, just YouTube. Just YouTube. Okay, okay. Well, that's I mean, work. That's yeah. yeah it's all there. You so find everything, many. right? Even today, there's a new um, composer I love, and uh, just today, after listening to his music for a month, I finally started watching his interviews and yeah. learning about his process. But, Amazing what you can can learn, right, on YouTube. I mean, like... I how, can, I've, I've become a contractor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can pretty much do everything exactly. for her. Yeah. Yeah. How, to, how to do a telephone interview on the podcast track four That's machine, right? right? That's right. <laughs> totally. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, stuff like that. Totally. Yeah. Because it doesn't come with the directions anymore. <laughs> how to descale this espresso <laughs> machine. <laughs> right. If it does come with directions, it's, like, impossible to understand. Yeah. Like, okay, <laughs> yeah. Tell me a little bit more about growing up you know, with your dad as the producer and his whole thing. I mean, that has to be, I mean, what influence? I mean, that's a crazy question. I mean, the level of influence that had on you. Yeah, totally. Because you guys are, like I said, you know, family oriented, the, the music you play, the people you play with, your repertoire is, is very similar, but it, I think it all comes back uh, from the regional influence, right? Memphis and whatnot. Yeah, our father, Jim Dickinson, was a first generation Memphis musician. He, he was five years younger than Elvis, but he sang on the last proper son single. So he oh, was wow. like first generation Memphis and Memphis in the fifties. That was rock and roll heaven, oh my man, gosh. you know, amazing. And, uh, and then, you know, he just followed the evolution, you know, became a folky in the sixties, mm -hmm. you know, and then the, all the blues musicians that were in Memphis and Mississippi became rediscovered in the mid to late sixties. So he befriended and played with Buckle White, Sleepy John De Estes, oh my God. you know, Mississippi Fred McDowell. This is all these amazing, you know. Then he went on to work for uh, Jerry Wexler and Tom Dowd in Atlantic Records wow. in nineteen seventy, and that's where he met Dwayne and the Allman Brothers. Right. And um, supposedly Long story short, he handed Greg the joint that he smoked before he recorded the Midnight Rider vocal no. take. He was struggling really? with that high note, and Tom Dowd, uh. you know, coaxed Dad in to pass him a joint. But no, and he and Dwayne were friends. They recorded lots of music Great together. Story. And then, as you said, Ry Cooter in the 70s yes. and 80s, yeah. film scores. They did a lot of film scores. So he started, we grew up. I always knew I wanted to be a guitar player, but I had to, didn't come naturally. I had to practice. But at a certain point, he took us under his wing and taught us his repertoire. And we started playing music together until he passed away oh. in 09. Yeah. Oh. Did you ever meet Stanley Booth? Oh, yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah, I'll bet you did. Totally. They were friends, huh? Yeah. 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 So there was a whole thing that uh, kind of turned, um, he kind of pulled away from the Muscle Shoals backing band not your dad no uh stanley yeah i mean he introduced uh, i'm trying to think what the story is and help me out well but, the story the yeah. big story is stanley was traveling with the stones okay and it took him years but he wrote a story about the rolling stones and uh their work visa had it was, this was right coming up right to altamont okay their work visa has had expired but they wanted to record in memphis under the radar. So Stanley Booth, literally on the road with him, he called dad. He was like, hey, can you help me out? We want to go to Stacks and record, but it's got to be a secret. And he was like, dude, if the Stones come back to Memphis, <laughs> everybody's going to be, you know, they're going to go crazy. Impossible. Go to Muscle Shoals. Nobody will know who you are. Uh -huh. And then he, Stanley Booth called back 
a couple of weeks later, I said, meet us on Thursday at Muscle Shoals. And so dad was there. The first night they cut You Gotta Move. The second night they cut Brown Sugar. And the third night they cut Wild Horses. Yeah, and he's on that, right? And he got to play on Wild Horses. How about that? I mean, that is just so cool, <laughs> right? I mean, I mean, proud papa. I mean, proud son of a Yeah, oh, man, oh, definitely. Oh. He was way cooler than we'll ever be. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't think, I don't know if he lied down. Oh, no. no. He wasn't so comfortable lying down in the green rooms with us. Yeah. <laughs> he might have been. With this huge stuffed animal looking down at you. It's like, oh. All right. Yeah. Oh, man, that is awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. What, uh, well, here's what I have to say. I mean, I'm still floored that you've never played at Sweetwater. This I, is I my first time. So and a, a lot of times, I mean, I think also if you came here to Terrapin or went the Independent or the Fillmore, you're of course. Not, you're right? so you're not going to play at all these places in the radius rule, right? You're only going to play so We're many. playing the Independent tomorrow. I know like, you are. Yeah. <laughs> Got through that, right? Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's different. Uh, it's different. So, um, so coming here tonight, what were your thoughts? Were you thinking, man, I'm playing here? Or were you just like, I'm curious to see I was excited. It? Excited. Really? Because I love the area. I spent a lot of time here. I have a family friend um, who lives up on the hill. Was it San Rafael? Yeah. San yeah. Rafael. Way up on the hill. Yeah. Windy hill. Probably up on Lyford. And uh, you, know, you, you can see all yeah. the way across the yeah. bay from his place. And we've been recording an ambient record. Because even from the Crows days, they would always do the Fillmore in December. Right. And yes. so my family, my daughter, my older daughter, my wife, who would always come. So we, you know, we come to San Francisco at least once a year. So, no, I love this area. And, and Terrapin, man, like my, you know, my time at the Best Western, learning <laughs> them material, like wearing <laughs> pencils down, you know, uh -huh. and those transcendent moments or those just like totally humbling train wreck moments, you yeah. know, like whatever. It's all. It's, but it worked. Oh, man. Yeah, worked. And uh, I'm just so glad to, to be back with the community because yeah. that's what it's really. It's, it's the so people. True. It is. You know, it's like a church. The people. Yes. Yeah. The electric so church. Yeah. yeah. What do we what do we get to hear tonight? Oh man, we just do some new, some old, and yeah. make something up. For That's me. what I wanted to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Get on our limb and break it. Yeah. yeah. So we got to get you back out here whenever. I'm not we, but we just have to hope you get back out here we'll yeah. back. as much as possible and uh, keep rolling. That, that whether it's Sweetwater or you know the other places, and we'll be chasing. Are around you playing here. any festivals? Have you asked? I get Strawberry Fest. Fest. Strawberry. I don't Fest. know how far away that is, but. We, we've been looking at like peach. We've been, we've been like, all right, is it just me or are there festivals galore I mean, this it's year? Crazy. I mean, one after another. Yeah. So, well, we'll give another plug to Skull and Roses because we're going to be there, and a lot of your friends are going to be there. Yes. And uh, here comes Liz again. Love you, Liz. So, man. Yeah. Just I wish I'd been here for the whole thing. Well, we'll play. I, I, you guys were. I can't believe how quiet you were. I had my ear. I'm like, well, what is Dennis? I don't know. I realize I have, the on? I have the headphones on. I don't normally wear them, but it's kind of cool. I, like I, yeah, I can't hear anything. I can't yeah. hear right up to your mouth. But... Oh, yeah, you did? I was yeah, out. Then I was out running around, running around. Running around. So, how about the food it. here? Let's go with the food. <laughs> That's where I'm laying down. That was delicious. <laughs> so good. What did they What did they serve you tonight? Ooh, uh, I'm going to tell you a little. Uh, you, you can answer that if you like. <laughs> it was good. It whatever. was good. I had the fish tacos. Oh, oh fish tacos. Yeah. What I'm going to tell you, here's a funny story. Your daughter, our daughter. Yes. Uh, delivered the uh she the did you have to call it she's my 16 year old <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's kind of an ancestral situation yeah oh wait a minute you know all about that <laughs> <laughs> well we're we're glad that uh, Cody Cody said I want to talk too so we'll get to him yeah, next and uh so cool man part thank, two. Yeah, yeah part, part two. two thanks for spending the time and the, the short notice and for being part of uh tales from the green room I just and want to thank the whole community for all their open oh, arm, open hearted awesome. you know love they've given us all these years. I can't wait to see everybody's, you know, enthusiasm. You know, this, it's going to be, it's going to be lit this up. This is a place everybody tells us that you can experiment. You can let your hair down. There's not no judgment. You know, I feel, you feel that. I mean, you don't know yet because you haven't played here, but you know the community. A lot of people say when the, they come, they like to come here at the end of a tour yeah, right. because they're just so, they have to be on all the time and then they can come and just let it down. And, oh, that's good. Yeah. So <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Run on Luther. Thanks Thank so you. much. Man. Thank you.
get back to the green room in just a moment. But first, we'd like to thank and hear from our sponsor helping make this podcast possible. This episode of Tales from the Green Room is brought to you by the Sports and Entertainment Group of the O'Hagan Meyer Law Firm. O'Hagan Meyer is a proud holder of a Mansfield Rules certification, reflecting an ongoing commitment to consider a broad pool of candidates as it hires and promotes by intentionally including lawyers who identify as members of historically underrepresented groups. The Mansfield Rule is named after Arabella Mansfield, the first woman admitted to the practice of law in the United States. Mansfield Rule certification reaffirms O'Hagan Meyer's commitment to equity and inclusion. The firm has a national scope with offices in San Francisco, Los Angeles, Chicago, Boston, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C., and can be found on the web at ohaganmeyer.com. Jason Crosby, Dennis Struzzolo. Hello. Here, part of the Tales from the Green Room podcast series, and we are focusing this time on Sweetwater Music Hall and its 50-year anniversary, and we're soliciting favorite memories or moments from musicians who have played at perhaps both, the old and the new. Did yeah, you? I did. Okay, I did. good. I, I played at the old Sweetwater, I believe it was 1994. I was still a teenager. I was playing with Solar Circus, and we were doing a cross-country tour. We opened up for Hot Tuna and the new riders at the Warfield. And then we came and did our own show at the Sweetwater the following night. Wow. How cool was that for you? Oh, man. What an experience. What what, what year did you say? 94. I'm pretty sure it was 94. So you had a pretty good idea of what was going on at that venue by then, huh? Or did you not? I No, I knew nothing. I knew nothing of the Bay Area at all. It was my first time here. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it was was quite a way to jump right in, you know, like... uh, I just remember just soaking in all of the history when I got to the Sweetwater, right. you know, the Warfield as well, but like the Sweetwater just like had that, you know, real. Yeah. What did you learn? Thing. What did you learn when you got there? Did you kind of looking at the walls of the, the photos of the people or did you just feel it or talk to people? It would, there, there was an energy with, and then, you know, obviously looking, looking around you, you would see it, but you could feel it even, you know, with your eyes closed almost. It's just like, it just had a vibe and a history. And I guess at that point it was probably 25 years old something like yeah, that yeah I can't do the math yeah. but yeah that's about yeah. right so the six but yeah a little yeah. bit more yeah yeah. and did you go back to the original no then I was just for some reason I guess because I was after that I was touring with bands that were playing kind of bigger rooms I was playing with Susan and Robert and we would come and play like the Warfield right okay Susan or Shoreline yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like a shed tour or something like that so every time I came back to the Bay Area after that it was playing kind of bigger places until I moved here Right. Well, I guess shortly before I moved here in 2012, I came. That was the first time playing the new room was with uh, with God Street Wine. Oh, very nice. You yeah. remember that? Oh, yeah. Okay. That was a huge, huge moment. That whole that whole month, August of 2012, was kind of the beginning of uh, my migration. Yes, back. I, I remember running into you actually. I'm probably, I'm sure you don't remember this, but at Terrapin, and you had just moved back here. Yeah. And what a beginning that was for you, right? That was probably like four or five months later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So cool. Yeah. And so Terrapin's gone. Sadly but it was a great, great yeah. time, great memory. It really was. And the vibe remains and the people remain. And, you know, like, and so we're here we now a little keep, bit. We could, yeah. Yeah. The so last cool. Crosby and friends that we did here felt, you know, had had that vibe, you know, along with the Sweetwater vibe. It just was just like, oh, yeah, these are the, you know, some of the Terrapin regulars that are here, uh, you know. There's no question. Many people were talking about that night, the Jason Crosby and friends, which was part of the, the anniversary month yep. of Sweetwater. And I, I walked out of there thinking, Terrapin, you know, the, the whole vibe. And it's kind of all, it's, you can't really label it to a venue necessarily. But. Yeah. Yeah. It's a community. Yeah. And, and, yeah. You know, okay. yeah and, and it still exists, you know, even if the, the building is, is gone. And, you know, this the spirit is still there. Phil's still doing his thing. And, you know, Graham is, is crushing it. And and you are everywhere, as we just talked about. <laughs> we, I am. Yeah. I am not. I do not have a lack of uh, music to play at this you're point. Not, you're not <laughs> idle. What is your uh, impression of this uh, venue? It's been open now for, you know, since 2012. So about 10 years. Yeah. Uh, wow. Oh, it opened in 2012. Yeah. So I I was here right from the from, from the start. The, yeah. Oh wow. Well, I didn't. I did not know that. I, I love it. It feels feels like home. I mean, I, I when I moved here, I moved to Mill Valley and lived here from 2013 through 16. So my early years of living in the Bay Area, this, it was like my local bar. Right. Like, you know, like I would come down here not having an idea of who was even playing and just 
cruising around. Just, and, just wanted to, and, and, and it's just kind of how I, you know, I'm, that's how I made friends here. Like, you know, I came out here kind of by myself and, you know, whole new community and, and, uh, look at you now. <laughs> and, uh, years later. Yeah. Yeah. It's humbling. It's, it's yeah, nice. And that's uh, really cool. Yeah. Well, isn't it, you know, it was always that way. Like before you weren't there in 94, it was kind of like Phil, I mean, excuse me, uh, Bobby called it his playpen. Right. So yeah. when the local musicians would come, they would hang out, bring their friends. You never know who was going to show up. And that's kind of happened in here a little bit. Yeah. I was here uh, with uh, Anders Osborne the other night. He visited with us. We nice. Got a nice interview with Anders. And guess who showed up? Jackie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what a guess, right? Yeah. yeah. And that was, and Anders was like, hey, I'm coming back here. This oh, is yeah. Do you know that was only his third time ever playing at Sweetwater? I oh, I, I, yeah. shocked to hear that. Okay. Yeah. So He must have done multiple nights. He did two nights. Yeah. yeah and we're... Uh, we're probably, we, me, we in Mill Valley, we in Marin are going to get him back here hopefully next year for maybe longer than that. And That'd he, be what great. he wants to do is grab some, his local friends. Maybe you'll be one of them. Yep. <laughs> so speaking of that, so our good buddy, Dan Friedman here in the video room here at the Sweetwater Green Room, production room, actually adjacent to the green room, pointed out that you're everywhere. I wanted to ask you a couple things. First of all, the Iceland experience. Oh my God. What? an experience going to Iceland with O'Teal and friends. I mean, it was just magical. I mean, I, you know, and I don't mean that lightly. It truly was. There was magic there in Iceland. And, you know, I feel like we made some magical music happen in the studio there. And, and it's, it's incredible. There's like a, you know, just an energy. And we saw the Aurora Borealis. And <laughs> that we helps. Were, we were staying at this, you know, really nice place. And just like, it, it was just, everything about it was just uh, unbelievable. I, it, it, it was like it was almost like a dream. It was like I'm going to say it sounds almost indescribable. In yeah, sense, right. It, 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 like at times, I, and I've experienced this not many times, but but I have experienced before where you just kind of shake your head and just like I can't believe that this is happening or this is my life or this is what's happening right now in this moment. Like that is so you cool. know, it's it, and appreciating it as it's happening, right? Yeah. As opposed to just going through it totally it was, yeah that's really cool totally. and that was a tribute to uh, robert hunter we were doing garcia hunter ballads garcia hunter. yeah yeah. How, yeah how great okay yeah. so where are we going to hear that someday or when i should say i you know that that, that <laughs> i don't know um that's you know okay. I, I can't wait to hear it myself yeah. <laughs> that's what i would imagine some point point yeah. in 2023 ot will put it out that's so cool now what we do know is when we're going to hear your new record yeah glider uh, Gilder. Gilder. Yeah. Gosh. Close. Pretty close, yeah. right? Not bad. I just picked it up uh, yesterday. I saw, uh, saw it, uh, you promoting it and we're very happy to promote it here. Tell oh, us yeah. about it. All piano. Yeah. It's a, it's a solo piano record that I covered a bunch of songs from, or interpreted songs from artists that I have been fortunate enough to be able to play with. So I have Jackson Brown song and uh, John McLaughlin from uh, Vishnu Orchestra song and did Unbroken Chain. And oh, cool. <laughs> The Mother Hips tune, and whoo, I did one of mine and one of my brothers, and yeah, Father John Misty tune, Pete Seeger tune. So I've had this like really lucky, amazing career so far, and and so I actually did two records. So Gilder Volume Two will drop some point next year as well, oh, probably like good. midway through the year. But uh, as we sit here today, and we're uh, late December 2022, it's going to be available very soon, correct? It, yeah, you can pre-order it now. It's coming out January 20th on Blue Rose Music, and you can check it out at bluerosemusic.com, I think. Yeah, excellent. Or my website, jasoncrosby.com. And I got the copies, got, came to my house like early same thing happened to hips we're on the same label so i guess you know we have the same manufacturer and for both of us found these boxes on our doorstep that we weren't expecting for a few more weeks and uh so in other words if you were here tonight it's we're this will drop after tonight of course but if you were here tonight you could pick there's up a copy. actually there's yeah i'm gonna sell copies i had them at the great american over the weekend with the hips and oh that's awesome and you have something coming up with phil too yeah the warfield with phil on the 28th does he gonna let you bring your records i don't know i gotta i gotta <laughs> ask him I'll gotta get to, permission on that one yeah well you know i, I should i should ask i should i shouldn't assume it you shouldn't assume it. yeah it's so cool. but you know I'm, I'm really i'm really proud of the record it's it's uh i've never done anything like that before and and it really was rewarding to record these songs and then the same day that i would track them i would text them to the writer and the responses that i got back from like you know i mean just seeing on my phone james taylor text messages <laughs> wow. mind fuck but uh but like Host holding his head. Here. Yeah, I'm just like, oh my god, who, who, yeah. what? 
but you know, Jackson and James and, and Josh Tillman and, and Phil, all these people have called me or, or texted me and Bruce Hornsby, I didn't cover one of his songs, but I met him and I gave him my record and he wrote me a, an email, you know, like that gave me a chill. It, it, yeah. I mean, it's just like, I mean, before the record even came out or anyone even knew it existed, I had just, I felt completely fulfilled by ah, the so process cool. of, of doing it. So I, I'm excited for everyone to hear it. I am so happy that you came here 10 years ago, came back. Thank you. <laughs> I just love the way you appreciate what you're doing and who you're doing with it. It's really cool. Thanks. I'm, I'm a lucky guy. You know, I, can't, I, I try not to take it for granted. Good for you. Let me ask you a question. i bring it back to Sweetwater for a second. Any favorite or memorable moments over the last 10 years that s- stick out? Oh, man. Yeah, there's tons. I mean... The God Street Wine first one, just because of the all of it. I mean, I have a, a, a deep history with that band and the fact that they were the catalyst that brought me out here. That that, that one's got to be in the top top moments. And then my first Crosby and Friends, I was you know heavily involved with TRI at the time. And I just had the best band that, like, for a debut of nobody knowing who the hell I was, I show up here and I do my first show under my name. And my band was Dave Schools and Bob Weir and Jay Lane and Jeff Kameni. And, you know, it's like... Not too shabby. Yeah, huh? <laughs> yeah. And, like, the support of those guys, you know, kicking it off for me, like, that obviously was such a huge moment. And I think I started that show, like, solo. And then Bob came out. We played duo. And we were both playing guitar. And, like, you know, it's just... You can't you know, even... You can't just, make it up, right? It's like Iceland. It's just like... Like, you know, what the, what the hell is happening right now? You know, like, uh, so that, that was a, another big one too, for sure. That one probably is going to stick it kind of, I mean, you can, there's so many, you know, we've talked to Jay Lane. We've talked to, um, a lot of people, Jay, <laughs> you'll hear hopefully, uh, prior to this one, Jay's favorite moment was when he, uh, did not know, uh, the two and Gloria and the band was playing it and he was just blown away. <laughs> the whole place was going glory. <laughs> and he's like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's amazing. So that's typical Jay, right? So, but Jason, so t- tell us about tonight i know you know it's going to happen but by the time people hear this but it's a cool thing you're doing yeah well brown. i've always loved you know when ever since i was a little kid i was watching the charlie brown christmas special and loved the music and i know vince garaldi's you know connection you know he's from here yeah, yeah. and uh charles schultz i guess was on the on the golden gate bridge and heard vince garaldi on the jazz station and was like that's it that's the that's the music for my cartoon. That's so cool. And like it all kind of came together organically here. And so like the fact that I live here now and I love that music, it's just like we have to. It was just a thing that it's like we have to do this. It's so perfect. And we we did it prior to the pandemic, and it was great. It sold out, and it was like okay, well this will be an annual thing. And we actually had the idea to do something in the spring, like we we had had we had booked for April 2020 the Dave Brubeck timeout record. Oh. But then the pandemic hit. We were joking about it today at Soundcheck because we still haven't done it. <laughs> and it, we, they, they reminded me that at the time we were like, oh, we'll just push it to June. <laughs> you yeah. know, and obviously, yeah, everything was the world be three just, months. just yeah. you know, like uh, so we're just kind of getting getting back at it now. So like this is our first one back live yeah. we did we, we actually filmed it at my house during the pandemic oh, we, exactly. we, and we did a charity thing for backline and raised thousands of dollars for backline just streaming just at my house cool. so wow. that was that was rewarding this be, tonight is streaming too by the yeah, way tonight is, is cool yeah yep. and uh, so with you you got members of alo you got yep. uh, lebo yeah, and, got lebo and and steve adams and ezra lip uh, it's, uh, yeah it's like kind of like jlo a little bit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> JLO. We'll go we're gonna go jlo <laughs> oh, that would be jlo yeah I, I don't i'm not quite yeah as, uh, well that's super cool well, well, uh, Jason, I'm going to let you get there and have a little bite to eat before yeah. you go out. I'm going to try listen. to try to hawk some vinyl. Yeah, do that too. You better <laughs> go to that. So listen, you are part of the Sweetwater Legacy. It's very nice to tell you that in case you didn't thank, know it. Thank you. Thank you for appreciating I, I, I do appreciate it. And I, honestly, I knew I was part of the Legacy when I got a friggin' plaque in the, the alleyway of this place. That right. I have a, I have a ledge. <laughs> a ledge. The Crosby ledge is on the, is on the side of this building. And once I saw that plaque, I was like, man, this is, this is home forever now. Good. Book it. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you came back as I said, and uh, keep pumping out the great music. Thank yeah. you so much. All James. right. Right on. All right, man. Okay. Thank you. Thanks Jason. Well, all right. That was super cool. Thank you for listening to another episode of Tales from the Green Room. And on this one, we thought it appropriate to end the show with a short clip from what Jason Crosby referenced as his first and perhaps favorite performance at Sweetwater. So listen and enjoy the beautiful piano playing of Jason on the song Electrocute from God Street Wine's August 11th, 2012 show at Sweetwater Music Hall in Mill Valley, California. And we'll catch you on the rebound.
see that girl again. 